dusk became calm. At the edge of Kodakere, the ocean wave was calm and rested. Bald trees and boats were approaching the shore. Birds were returning from hunting in the sea. A short distance along the shore was a stretch of white sand. Beyond that, the forest spread far and wide. The branches of wild trees do not sway, the leaves did not move. There was silence on all sides. The red god was rushing down towards the place where the sea and the sky meet. The clouds tried to hide some of the sun's red rays and were themselves illuminated. A small boat floated in the sea near the shore. The gentle waves of the sea gently rocked the boat like a baby's bell rocking a cradle. There was a young woman in that boat. Seeing her, we remember how Sendan Amuthan commented on his uncle's daughter. Yes, she must be a flower girl. As befits the name, her hair was graced with a petal of a lotus flower. Long black hair fell in curls and draped over her slender shoulders. She used to wear conch shells, oysters etc. which the sea waves leave on the shore. But all these things cannot be said to have adorned her, unless they themselves became beautiful because of her mane. If beauty itself has a form, what ornament can beautify it? Bungaze Lai sang while leaning comfortably on the boat. It was as if the waves of the sea had calmed down to listen to her voice. That's why the wind did not blow and it seemed to be crawling slowly. Even the wild trees in the distance stood motionless and listened carefully to her voice. It was as if the heavens and the earth stood motionless on hearing that song. It seems that even Kadi Raven hesitates to reach the corner of the ocean and disappear in front of that con. Bathed in honey and floating in the sky, you can listen to the apatal. I don't know what kind of sadness is in that young girl's heart. I don't know what kind of pleasure and pain was mixed in her words. Or maybe they composed the song by mixing tears with the words in Abbatal, that too we do not know. But when we hear her sing that song, we get a heart-wrenching feeling. Punghuali stopped the song. She stroked the oar of the boat four times. The boat came close to the shore. Pungaze Lai jumped from the boat and landed on the shore. She pulled the boat to the shore. A bunch of bamboo trees were lying on the bank. She lifted their mid boat so that it was leaning. She also leaned on the leaning boat and looked around once. There was a fire in the top hall of the lighthouse. The fire burns away from the flame. The torch will be burning all night from now on. To the seagoing loggerheads it says never come near, warns that there is no depth in the sea at the edge of Kadakere. Only moored trees and small boats can approach the shore in that area. If the log and the tongue get too close, the floorboard will be buried in the sand. If it hits the ground too fast, the ship will split and break apart. Hence, the lighthouse at Kadakere provided much needed assistance to the mariners. On the other side, in the midst of a dense forest of short trees, a tower stood tall. There was a temple of crores of people under it. About two hundred years ago, Sri Sundaram Murthy Nayanar came to these shores. Oh! Lord! Are you alone in the middle of this coastal forest without a companion? Is there no other place to stay? There are so many places where devotees are singing your praises. I will come to this Kodi and have a temple alone in the terrible forest? The eyes of this Kodi Yana have seen this scene too. He sang with heart. Two hundred years after Sri Sundaramurthy Nayanar's visit and departure, Kodi Karakulagar remained in the same condition. Thousands of years later, millions of people are still in the same state of isolation. There were still a few forests around. Owls and coots roosted in wooden boxes in the woods. A few hideous hunters lived in huts here and there in the middle of the forest. Yes, there was only one difference. There was no lighthouse when Sri Sundaramurthy Nyan was here. It was built a few years back, during the reign of Paranthakar I. A few log houses were built around it for the lighthouse workers. Buddha, who worshipped at the Kadakare Kulagar temple, also came and settled there. Pungaze Lai was leaning on the boat by the beach and looked around. She looked at the lighthouse and wondered if she could go that way. Then she looked at the Gopura Kalasam of Kulagar Temple. At that moment, when she heard the sound of Seaman Gollum in the temple, Pungazelai came to a decision. What do you do when you go home? Let's go to the temple. 
you can ask Batar to sing Devaram. Then you can buy Prasad and bring it. Having decided like this, she walked towards the direction of Pungazali temple. She walked, dancing, singing, and jumping. On the way she saw a herd of deer. The deer were crossing the sandy plain towards the forest. Along with seven or eight big deer, a small deer was running. Punghuali became excited when he saw the herd of deer. She kept jumping and running as if she was going to catch them. But can anything run fast and compete with deer? A herd of deer overtook the flower. The deer in front raised all four legs at one point and leaped a long distance as if flying in the sky. Punguzali speculated that there was a mud pit buried there. All the big deer crossed the hole in one jump and landed safely. But the fawn could not jump all the way. At the edge of the acre its hind legs were stuck in a mud pit. Only the young deer tried to climb the bank by placing its forelegs on the bank. But its hind legs were sinking deeper and deeper into the mud. The mother deer stood on the bank and looked anxiously at the condition of the cub. So she could not do anything to help her child. Seeing all this in a second, Pungazali saw and knew where the muddy pit ends. She ran to the side of the burial ground and crossed through the thicket to reach the spot where the deer was stuck in the mud on the opposite side. At first the mother deer was frightened by her. Pungazali seems to know the bash of the deer. She said something in a soft voice and the fear of mother deer disappeared. Pungazali sat with her forelegs folded on the bank of the mud pit, stretched out her arms and pulled the deer strongly to the shore. For a few seconds, the body of the deer was trembling. The mother deer stood by it and sniffed and dared. That's it. The next second the mother and the cub were running again. See. You ungrateful beasts. Punguzali said to herself. But these deer are no more level than men. That is what she herself said. Then again she walked towards Kulagar temple. After crossing the sandy plain one had to go through a dense jungle of mangroves. We had to go up the hill and down the ditch. It must be said that the forest is one of the wonders of nature. There are no rocky hills or hills. Only sand is exposed. In some places, the sand was raised and the plants and trees sprouted on the sand and the sand became hard and turned into hills. There were ditches beside the hills. Finding your way through such a jungle is not an easy task. It seems too far gone, but we keep coming back to where we left off. Pungazali entered the forest path and walked very quickly and reached the temple. Outside the temple and inside the temple, kana, pana etc. trees were growing and blooming. Punguzali went into the temple. Butter blushed at her. The people who come to have darshan of Sami inside the temple are wonderful. So, is it normal to be happy when someone comes in beautiful? He brought coconut cover and prasad and gave butter. Mother, are you waiting for a while? I'm going to lock the sunity and come home. Said. It was a bit of a challenge to navigate that forest path after dark. But no worries if you have a florist to guide you. Here I am, sir. I am in no hurry. Finish the temple chores slowly and depart. Pungazali said that and came to the temple Prakarat. She jumped over the wall of the Prakaram holding a branch of a tree. A large statue of Lord Nandi was placed in the corner of the wall. Leaning slightly on the statue, she stretched her legs on the wall. She scraped the coconut lid with her teeth and started eating. While Punghuli was looking at the strangeness that was enveloping the darkness on all sides, she heard the sound of horses' footsteps. She was eagerly looking towards the direction of the sound. The sound of horses' feet awakened some old memories in her heart and took her to the world of dreams. An unknown sadness came from somewhere and closed the chest. Who could be coming? Who do we care? New people have been coming and going for a while now. They come as a matter of state, they are going. Even yesterday two people came. It was disgusting to see them. They went to Elam asking their brother to make a boat. They also gave a lot of money. Let thunder fall on their money. Who needs money? What to do in this jungle with money? But brother and sister-in-law have the same desire for money. I don't know anything. They put them together and bury them. 
The sound of horse footsteps is getting closer. Not a horse, two horses appear to be coming. Here they are. They are slowly climbing up the hill from the ditch. The horses were tired after traveling a long distance. On every horse comes a man. The one who comes on the first horse is the youth. He is a symbol to behold, he is also handsome and has a majestic face. But where is the beauty and majesty of that other face that dwells in the recesses of her heart? Where is his face? If you go to see, his face is not like the face of an owl in a wooden ball, is it flat? The first of the two on horseback was our old friend Valavere and Vandiyadeva. The next one was the doctor's son. Both of them are tired and exhausted before they come here from old time. However, Vandiyadeva's face brightened a little when he saw Fungajali, who was leaning on the wall of the temple with his legs stretched out. When he realized that she was staring at his face, he was naturally excited. He also stopped the horse and stared at her face with interest. He would not have been so excited if he had only known that she was comparing his face to that of the owl in the treehouse. How good is it that what is in one mind is completely unknown to another? Punguzali knew that the horseman was staring at her. She also thought that she was holding a coconut in her hand and scraping it with her teeth. Immediately, a feeling came from somewhere and gripped her. Prakara jumped out of the wall and onto the white sand. She started running along the wall. As soon as Vandiyathevan saw it, the horse seemed to jump from the top. It seemed to jump up and run after the flower pot to catch it. He chased her like that and ran away. Who can trace the causes of this senseless act? It is necessary to say that the succession of mankind for thousands and ten thousand years was nature that made Fungajay lie run, and that made Vandiyadeva chase and catch.